Hello friends and welcome to Noclip's production masterclass or whatever we're going to call this series. Uh, this is the first episode in hopefully a long series where we dive into the many, many different nuts and bolts that are required uh, to put together a Noclip documentary. Um, doing this sort of work involves lots and lots of sort of disparate disciplines, everything from filming to lighting to editing, um, audio production, even down to just creating thumbnails for the videos. There's lots and lots of different things that coalesce to make one of our productions. And I feel like I was in a very fortunate position that not only did I sort of teach myself over a number of years, but then I got to work at GameSpot and sort of test out a lot of the stuff that I learned and also learn a lot more about the best way of doing a lot of these things. So hopefully with this project, what we're going to do is essentially expose you folks to lots and lots of different disciplines, explain uh, how we do them at least, myself, uh, Jeremy Jane, uh, the camera op we use, and perhaps also Esteban Martinez, who's our sort of uh, our latest uh, camera op, who shot a lot of the behind the scenes stuff on our latest project, this Fallout one, um, and sort of show you at least how we produce the documentaries that we do uh, in these little videos, uh, and then open up to questions that we can hopefully answer as well. Uh, so the first one that I'm going to do uh, on my own right now is uh, the sort of the anatomy of a trailer. Um, trailers are really important, uh, not just for getting word out about the documentaries, but as me as an editor, it's actually the first thing that I work on. So whenever we go film somewhere, we do our stand-ups, we do our interviews, I sit back, um, and there's sort of two main jobs that I have right away. The first is to pull selects from the rushes. So rushes is basically the sort of all of the footage that we collect. And then selects are the pieces that we want to put in the documentary. Uh, that's the sort of one of the first jobs. And the second one is to make the trailer. Uh, the rushes, get, getting those selects from the rushes, that's sort of, I, I use the trailer as sort of something that I, I, to motivate me to to make sure that I I don't know get really good stuff because all the really good stuff I want to put in the trailer. Uh, it also helps me build a sort of a mental image of the size of the project and the different things we're going to be talking about. I tend to take notes and things like that. But the trailer itself, it's probably most important for um, dictating the aesthetic of the rest of the project. So in each project, we use different sort of visual hooks uh, in the editing process uh, that are unique to this one project. Um, in this one, it involved a lot of um, sort of distorted VHS type stuff, like lots of green uh, to be fallout, and then lots of um, what's known as light leaks. Um, uh, to sort of emphasize the historical Elder Scrolls-y stuff. So those are the two like visual languages that we had. It wasn't like I woke up one day and went, you know what, we're going to use a bunch of green stuff that looks like vats, and then we're going to use a bunch of light leaks to make it look like old dragon times. Um, that all happened during the trailer process. I was editing this three-minute piece of video where you're really getting down to the nitty gritty, you're looking at it on a millisecond by millisecond level that you're kind of not on a 90 minute documentary. You kind of can't afford to look at it that much, at least not until right in the end. So I love doing the trailers because it sort of sets the tone. And then the things that I learned in the trailers, I apply to the larger project. Um, so the way we're gonna look at this is, is it's a little bit backwards because obviously the process of making the trailer comes from iterating and going back and going back. And this trailer was probably edited for about three weeks. Not just the trailer, but the final version of it would have come together. I probably would have had the doc maybe 75% finished by that time as well. But during that process, I'm just developing the language. Um, so obviously, we're kind of coming at it from the reverse perspective where it's the, it's the finished timeline. But uh, we're going to go through it pretty uh, uh, speedily um, or, or pretty minutely just to sort of give you an idea of, of the different disciplines and different things that are happening uh, during the trailer and also the ways in which I sort of used um, my experience through editing uh, this trailer to, to come to this final project. I'm not going to play through the trailer uh, once. I would recommend you to go watch the trailer if you've not seen it yet. It's on our Noclip channel, our YouTube channel. I'll put it in the comments as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to I'm gonna go through basically how this whole thing came together. So here's our timeline for the trailer. Uh, the project name we gave this was Rhodes. Um, uh, the reason we did that was because uh, uh, the Greenbrier Hotel in in uh, the sort of they have a version of in Fallout um, is uh, was part of something called Operation Greek Island, which was where the presidential bunker was. Um, so it was a little sort of nod uh, to that. Uh, whenever we referred to this project internally, myself, Jeremy, or Esteban, we referred to it as Rhodes. Um, we also all the different bins I have over here. 
Um, if you're new, this is Adobe Premiere. If this is the sort of the uh, the way that I have it set up during my editing process, um, uh, where I have the sort of the, the 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 clips that I pull up end up in this window, and the final one is here. I have it on full here. There's a couple of digital effects that might slow this thing down, but we'll see. It should be okay. And then over here in the bottom left is my bin with all my different bits in it. Um, we divide it into different days of sh filming, um, other sort of uh, m bins full of things that um, maybe uh, I can pull from. Like I put all the different games in here separately. So Ghost was Fallout. So Ghost 3 is Fallout 3, Ghost 4. Skybox was Skyrim. Uh, all these different things. Cruise was Oblivion. There was all this silly, just ways for me to remember what they are, but I didn't want them to be public. In case I, in case I opened this up one day, I didn't want Twitch to see it and it would say fucking... Starfield or Oblivion. Um, so uh, that's where all that sort of stuff is. And then this is our main timeline we're looking at here. So the trailer is about, what was it, three, three and change? It's probably about as long as I'd make it. The sort of common knowledge and video stuff is if a trailer's longer than two, if it says two minutes in it, as long as it's not past that, then you're, you're free and easy. Um, but I always leave a little bit at the end to put uh, end screen annotations on YouTube. So it ended up pushing it over three. Um, but I was fine with that in the end. Uh, so here's the start of the video. Streaming live. You may notice we have some cameras here and some guests from the Real Housewives of Rockville. Is that what it is? <laughs> okay, so that is the first 15 seconds of, of the trailer. And essentially, what that's uh, attempting to do is to establish the project that we're working on and to build some sort of anticipation for what it is because we know that people are going to see they're going to see the headline of the trailer on youtube already so they're kind of going to know oh, it's bethesda full but they're not going to, not going to analyze the title that long they're going to go into the video um having todd be the sort of focal point of this was really important because he's actually not in this trailer all that much um and also sort of showing the behind the scenes nature of it was really, really important. So that's why we had this whole thing where it's like, okay, we just, you know, you're you're pushing in slowly into the story. Okay, we're in some okay, business park, whatever, it doesn't really matter. There's a bunch of people getting ready for a meeting and they're all chatting to each other. Uh, there's two different types of audio here. This obviously wasn't the same audio or the same angles. These are all recorded before this bit with Todd because we only had one camera up that day. Um, so what I did was I overlapped the sound of this, or this is just general sound of people talking. If we just play that on its own. Um, oh, the project. This is, oh yeah, always have autosave every five minutes or something when you're working on these things. Um, even if you're not really working on it anymore. So this is the... <laughs> that's just some sounds that we have of the audience. And then what I have is a different clip here with Todd talking. We're good, all right, we're streaming live. You may notice we have some cameras here and some guests. And I think he probably rambled a bit here, which is why what I've done here is I've chopped up his his lines uh, so that it's a little bit faster because he probably went, probably said something, blah, 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 in between that. Actually, we can probably just find out if I do this. If I pull this thing back. Um. Yeah, okay, so he said, um. So that would have taken out the... Yeah, the wind out of it. Uh, also, I don't necessarily uh, believe in just using volume controls here. What, these two things here is because what I've done is up in the top left here, my effects panel, you can see that the volume is at zero decibels. Um, uh, I have a separate audio uh, um, post process happening on this, I think, but it's at zero and then I'm basically pulling it down to, to, to minus whatever infinity here uh, manually. I don't necessarily think that's the best way of doing it. I just end up doing it that way. A lot of the times you can just as easily do an audio transition, just do an audio effect and do like a, what is it? Like a gain, like a, like a constant gain. And you just drop that on there and it'll, uh, it'll effectively do the same thing. It'll just pull it in. Um, I'm not sure if the constant game. Actually, maybe not the constant game. Maybe a different one of those. Um, but yeah, that was just a way of just cleaning up that a little bit. And if you put combine it all together, it creates the, the feeling that everyone's in the room and then when Todd speaks, everyone is quiet. We're good. All right. You're streaming live. You may Which obviously is completely artificial, but it, it gives you that um, sort of... Uh, uh, effect. The other reason for not showing Todd until the end is that people who know his name or recognize his voice or any of those things, um, they kind of they, they kind of get a little bit. They get like a what is it like a five to like a five second lead in where they know they might know, and then you give them the answer. And this is the thing that um, a lot of uh, 
directors use. David Fincher is probably my favorite director. And if you watch, there's really good YouTube videos that break this sort of stuff down. But if you look throughout his work, what he tends to do is he, um, the end of Seven is probably a good example. I don't want to spoil the end of Seven, but it's a good example where he's constantly setting up situations where the audience is ask, is asking a question and he makes them wait before they get the answer. And the idea is it's just a normal engaging piece way to create video is to have people wondering and then something and then they get an because otherwise if people know what's happening all the time they just zone out um so what essentially what we're doing here is we're sort of we're, we're where are we like where what's going on where are we okay we're we're in a we're in a building is is that todd howard is that what they're talking about what are we doing here like what's the why are we recording this why isn't it an interview with somebody oh it's a behind the scenes thing and he's also telling the people so it's like you're you're answering and questioning and answering lots of questions at the same time in this first like 15 seconds from the real housewives of rockville is that what it is <laughs> it's also funny and lighthearted and fun so that was the reason for that uh this next section then is the this is where the sort of the 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 visual aesthetic of this whole project came together um right here i'm using a bunch of different effects on the standard no clip uh um, animation, I guess. The, this is one of the bugs that we use. Um, I can't, for some reason, I can't search at the moment in here. I don't know what's doing. It's just I haven't built the. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, the uh, the VHS. The oh, sorry, that's the VHS. The regular bug we use is is this. It goes dot 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 and then sits in there and it disappears. Uh, actually, it's probably this guy here, isn't it? Yeah, I have to. I have a frame hold in here because it doesn't actually stay as well as or I wanted to manually animate it. Um, but essentially, we've got a couple of different things going on here. One, uh, this is actually not part of the logo. I added it in, I think, back on the Rocket League doc, which is why it says YouTube end card no clip underscore or L final doc dot PNG, because um, we never had a subtitle. So I've used this same PNG image. It's literally just like a piece of text floating that I just put there. So, I, I, but I go back into other projects and just copy and paste stuff all the time. So that's how it happens. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, and then this guy up here is the VHS effect. There's a, a couple of different effects happening here. The VHS effect is a is a piece of video that I got. Um, actually, funnily enough, back at the Rocket League doc, because I think maybe when I last used it, I think I use it fairly in fairly frequently. I might have used it in the in the um, uh, the. Uh, the Warframe doc as well. Let me see if I can find it. It's a really, really long piece of video. It's how long is it? It's a 40 minute video of VHS static. So you just play it and it's just like, look at it. So there's lots of, lots of different bits, lots of different flavors in there. Scan lines, a little bit of dirt. And it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. I got a bunch of this stuff. We'll, we'll dive into all these different, I got glitch transitions and light leaks and all this sort of stuff. It's my little FX bin that I've sort of built over the past uh, couple of months. Uh, but essentially what this thing is, all it is is that VHS effect that's on. And I have uh, one thing on it. Actually, I thought I, had a, I thought I had a color replace, but I actually don't. A color replace would work just as well. Uh, what I have is actually a, a plugin that I purchased from Red Giant. I think maybe... I think maybe I, it's a hundred dollars a year for this package. I forget. Um, where it's a it's it's essentially a preset that that creates a uh, different type of digital effect. Uh, some of them are colored. You you can you can fuck with these as well in terms of the uh, the the color and on all the effects of it once you're in there. But these are just the presets. Um, so all the different damage and 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 you sort of have to tweak this stuff to get used to how it all works and whatnot. And you could put different um, uh, masks on it as well if you want. A, a color replace would have, would essentially work probably just as well because all it would do is turn the rather gray looking. Uh, you might have to like boost the brightness and contrast to make those things really pop before you replace the color. But you could just do a color replace and say everything that's white here turn to green. Um, the hollow matrix thing adds a bunch of different, probably different types of green to it. It gives it a bit more depth and variety. Uh, but that's essentially what that thing is going on. And then the thing at the uh, start is uh, straight up an analog uh, transition preset that I purchased. Oh, it's going to freak out now. Um, I bought a bunch of these off of some website. I forget what website it was. I, I gave some Russian guy like 20 quid and it was like 200 of these different analog presets. Um different glitches and stuff. So I have a bunch of them here. So here's one. Here's another. 
So they're all like just different versions of it. And essentially what you do is if you've never seen these before and you, you don't like, I'm not very good at doing motion graphic -y stuff. I'm just, I'm kind of learning after effects at the moment. But for instance, if we want to use it, let's use a different one that looks a bit unique. Like, uh, there's digital ones here as well, which are a bit more blocky and on the nose. That, that one there is kind of cool, actually. Let's use that one. So what you do is you drop it in. Obviously, if you drop it in, it's just on top of it. It's not really doing much. But if you go to effect control, you change the blend mode to, I guess, screen, probably. Then essentially what it does is anything that's black, it... It, uh, and it turns it into an alpha channel, so it, it makes it see through effectively anything that's that's black. Um, and then probably what you want to do, I never understood why the uh, opacity always has a uh, has a time on it, but um, turn that off and it just like maybe crank it down a bit because you probably don't need all that. So you can just do that, and then it'll look like see it doing that little thing. So it's actually probably you probably don't want to do that because you probably need it higher. Yeah? yeah. So essentially, what I have is I have one at the top, and then is the one at the end the same one? I think it might be different. Uh, this one is glitch one. This one is glitch four. Yeah, so they are actually different. Uh, the other thing that's happening is the audio. So that's that's uh, just glitched out of it there because it's trying to process it in full resolution um, or full detail. So there's two things going on. One, uh, there's a dong piano key getting hit, which is sort of, again, anticipatory. It's like... <gasps> Music's coming. Here we go. Um, and then the other thing that's happening is that I've pulled uh, the audio of uh, of of Vats or um, of the Pip Boy. Oh, that's not what that is. There we go. That's a. Oh, that's funny. The rest of the track is just audio from me playing Fallout 4. Cool. So that's the sound, and I've basically looped it a couple of times. There's a couple of different versions here. You know what? Actually, let's just get rid of that for a second. We'll just we'll just keep the the sound. So here's, this is the normal sound without any, it's just a static, it's just, um, actually we'll just do that, you can just hear it. So what it is, is just like, uh, it's actually duplicating but you can't even tell. Just that static sound that's in the, the, the Pip-Boy, and then whenever you turn the dial on the Pip-Boy into, so you go left, right trigger or left trigger to go into the next section, it makes it kind of a like like the radio is kind of kicking in and, and listening to itself again. That. So every time I learned, I did it for the trailer, but literally every time we do a transition that does that type of thing, I put that sound in because you you need it. If otherwise it would just it doesn't feel like a real transition. It feels like a visual effect that was put on screen. It doesn't actually feel like somebody's taking out one video reel and sticking in another, which is kind of the effect that you're trying to go for. You really need to sell this sort of stuff, basically. So that's effectively what's happening here, is that you have the in and the out on this one are using that same sound. So it, it goes, punches in. Sits there. Static. Punches out. And then we're into the next section. I told you this video is going to be exhaustive we're only 15 seconds into it um this stuff is probably a little bit faster we're essentially just establishing where we are we're enjoying the sort of uh, nostalgia of what's about to happen we're introducing uh, both skyrim and fallout imagery so people know it's not just about one or the other uh, the music is fallouty but it's it's not overly digital in the way that a lot of inanzor's music is you could sort of think that maybe this is actually a, a track from uh, elder scrolls if you can't remember so essentially it's just a bunch of uh B-roll, vanity shots, Mr. Handy, this is the lobby of Bethesda, and it ends on that. So in this situation, you're kind of at the whim of the music. Like, when I decide to do a trailer with the music from the game, the big plus is that, great, we're going to... All that nostalgic feeling that you get from the games, I'm getting it for free. I'm putting it on the timeline, I'm just getting it for free. It's awesome. Um... The, the difference is that you're sort of at the behest of that music. You can't really change it too much because if you do, people, it doesn't sound like what they think it's going to sound like. It's really, really, one of the worst things you can do in any editing is to think somebody's going to see A and then make them see X. Unless that's what you're attempting to do, like in horror or something like that. But especially not for a trader, you want people to feel like they're in the flow of the video as well. So... Uh, I knew that I had whatever, these like four bars of music until we get to the thump.
So it just sounds, it kind of, at this stage, the music is kind of guiding my vision, where I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna go win video. And there is a tendency, you'll get this a lot, the more you edit, the more confident you'll get at this, but there is a tendency when you have like four bars like this, just do four videos. So you can be like, one, video two, three, and then four. Obviously, I've broken up that flow a little bit because what I've done here is I've put in I've put in two, and I've used the sound of the strings to sort of lead into that second image. So we've got two, three, four. It sort of settles in that way. Um, the idea for that is is you don't want it too obvious. Sometimes you want to you want to be playful. I feel like if it was just like one, two, three, four, it's like by the time four came, I'm a little bit bored, but there's this little flurry here. And it's also probably the most interesting piece of footage because this Mr. Hattie is amazing. And it's like warm. It's like there's something beautiful and warm about that string. Violins are always like very like, well, not always, but like they can be and are often used, especially in games, actually, to be very like nostalgic, warm sort of feeling. And there's something beautiful about, it. okay, we have this and we're just going to, and then we're going to closer do them and then add again. So that was that. That was kind of how that all fell together. Uh, then this section, this probably did not come together until like two days before the video was done. The text, and I'm still not very happy with it, but the text and stuff for this was was very very difficult. Um, less so for Fallout, but more for the Elder Scrolls stuff. <laughs> So I played Daggerfall first and then... So I think what I ended up doing was there was... I think it was when I came up with the thumbnail for the final video, which uses this double bar sort of aesthetic, which is kind of, I'm not even sure if it is used in Elder Scrolls imagery at all in the logos, but it felt to me like old world D Lord of the Rings to have these bars holding everything in. Um... But this whole section was was a lot of work. So there's a couple of things happening here. One, we've got the B-roll. Uh, this wall that Jeremy shot was just a wall that's in their office that has all... It's basically the, the wall from the um, intro slash teaser trader or first trader for Skyrim. Um, uh, it's not particularly well lit there, but Jeremy did a great job of making it look quite uh, uh, detailed um, and, and casting some pretty dramatic shadows on it and stuff. Uh, and then essentially what we did is, sorry, first of all, everything we do is color corrected. So this is what it usually looks like. And then Jeremy color corrects it and makes it look like that. So he's a fucking genius, first of all. Like every, literally every shot we have is like, look how dirty that looks. That's how he makes it look. So <laughs> yeah. hire Jeremy Jane to color your stuff. Um, uh, then when I got the lines, I realized, oh, I should do some sort of visual flurry that uses lines. So one of the lines that I had in one of these packages um, was this forms thing and it basically is just like a bunch of a bunch of lines doing that it doesn't really look like much but again if you put an alpha channel on it it looks like either like drawing a map or something i didn't even edit it between sections it actually still kind of works because just just how transparent it looks you can't really tell if it's different if it's flowing between the two and it's just a little bit of a visual flurry and uh, the other thing that's happening here is the light leaks so if we get rid of that We'll get rid of the the text. You'll see these light leaks. See this? This little red guy? I did this in the trailer for the um, Rocket League video too. So people you overuse these a lot. I could say we probably I probably overuse them a bit in this trailer, but uh they were really working for me. And essentially what light leaks are is it's just like this shit. It's just if people using a getting a lens in a camera in a dark room and essentially just playing with light to create sort of fake solar flares and things like that. Um, but not just solar flares. These type of things were like, imagine like if you're shooting outdoors and you had, you move the camera and it catches a bit of the sun and the slightly part of the lens ends up getting it. Uh, you get this effect called a light leak. Uh, there's lots of different, this is kind of the more generic-y type one. Um, I have a whole, I have two whole libraries full of these things and some of them are quite dramatic. Stuff like this reminds me of, um, I think it's, what's it called? Is a is it sex tape? It's called. It's a, a Deftone song. They did a. They shot it underwater with like plastic and shot lights into it. It's unbelievable. It's one of my favorite music videos ever. Um, so there's quite a diverse amount of these, and there's no real rhyme or reason to when they work and when they don't work. You kind of just have to feel it out. Um, but essentially, the way I like to use them is is as transitions. So this is quite a dramatic. Like you see, it explodes right as the transition happens, and that's 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 by design. That it's supposed I moved this around. So if I had it over here, 
it doesn't work as well for me. Actually, oh, it worked all right, but it doesn't. It doesn't have that same like. It feels like a transition with that little bit of a burst there. So same thing as the last time. I have it as a screen. I actually have it at a hundred percent here, because it did. I guess if I turned it down, it wasn't gonna be as effective. So that's at thirty percent. Can't really see it as well. So and then I have another light leak on this end. As it pushes into that, you'll see it go boom, kind of like flashes it a bit. And then the text was like, embark on a quest, it's very, here we go, here we go, we're watching this trailer, we're getting hyped, embark on a quest. And then, message one. There's two messages, three messages I wanted to talk about in this doc, in this trailer. One, I wanted people to know that we were doing stuff about the other scrolls. I wanted people to know we were doing about uh, stuff about Fallout. And I wanted them to know that we're doing stuff about the new unannounced or untalked about Fallout game, Fallout 76. So this section is all about Elder Scrolls. So it's like, boom, we're doing Elder Scrolls. Even though at the start there was like a Fallout-y type no-clip thing, don't worry, we're also doing Elder Scrolls. So I played Daggerfall first and then got hooked and... So this is uh, Matt Carfano, who is the uh, lead, I want to say lead artist at Bethesda Game Studios. Um, I'm very much a fan of having audio come in before people. You don't, like, again, it's it's a asking a question. Who is this person? What are they talking about? What do they look like? That type of thing. So I played Daggerfall first and then got hooked and started playing all the other. Uh, the Daggerfall footage I'm not super happy about. Um, I pushed in on it because it looked a bit dorky if I did it standard. It just didn't have the same effect. Got hooked looked. and started playing all the uh, It just didn't look too great. Um, so I wanted to show the first person this. I didn't want to go for this big frame to like, Boop. It just looked like we're doing this big documentary about these video games. Boop. It, it seemed to not really work for me, so I I'm not sure if it's effect if it's perfectly effective, but I, I'm I'm happy with this rather than the alternative. Looked and started playing all the other Bethesda games, but Arena at the time I was like, oh, I don't know, that cover's so goofy. I don't think I could get into that. You know, after we so th this whole part was like again trying to be funny, lighthearted. People are reminiscing about their games we're going to start from the start and we're going to get to the future so we need to talk about this was one sentence basically where he talked about arena and daggerfall so instead of me having to do here's a person talking about arena here's a person talking about daggerfall or here's a person talking about just daggerfall or just arena i had this one sentence that really like you know in the space of what do we got 38 through 47 so in the space of nine seconds he basically wraps up two of the things we're going to talk about um, and then I didn't really have any ones about Morrowind or anything that was like particularly good. So, uh, but I had this line from Ashley, which I quite liked about uh, about Redguard. So I put that one in. You know, after we finish Redguard. And again, I'm using I'm using the B-roll as a transition. So instead of a punching from one person to another, it feels more free flowing. It's like okay, we have Matt talking about. I was like, oh, I don't know. That arena. So goofy. I don't think I could get into that. You know, after we finish Redguard. And we're done with that, and then we're into this new story. Who's this new Our, person? The whole team, the whole entire company went downstairs into the basement, and we would all package the games up to be shipped out. And, and that was sort of how things worked back then. But that so that establishes, like, that whole thing, and that's sort of how things worked back then, and showing these old awards and games. Again, it's just laying a foundation of we're going to talk about all this stuff back then. And hopefully, the two things we've just picked out you're, have piqued your interest. You're like, oh, that's interesting. And then we'll answer them in the doc. So it's a lot of, like... We're not trying to like come out with the big hitters. We're trying to like present interesting questions that are feeding your sort of like anticipation of the documentary itself. And that was sort of how things work. Another light leak here up here. You can maybe see it. Back then. But I think. See up here. So I'm not really sure about this one. It's a bit on the nose. It works well here. And then it might. It's kind of too bright here. Um, I played around with this for a while. It kind of looks like this. But I think the technology. It was the first. Big I think the reason I stuck with it is because the sound of the fireball coming out of. Kind of worked. I don't know. It might be a bit on the nose. If I was to redo this, I'd probably either do a transition or just straight up knock this one. Oh, did I already have a transition on there? No, I didn't. Knock this one down to like maybe 25 and then go maybe a little bit less on the nose. Uh, but, you know, let's leave it the way it is because that's that's the way it was. Um, And then Todd's voice again is coming in talking about... um. Oblivion, because I, because again, the music demands that I only have this much left to talk about Elder Scrolls before I get into the next bit, because the next sort of section of music is coming up. Um, I think the technology, it was the first bit. So I do that, and then you can see the audio 
and the video there's a cut here because i if i didn't it'd just be like do, 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 waiting for the goblin to come over do, 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 so instead there's a cut where it's like fireball the first big and then open world and all that gameplay is stuff we record so i record this Turn the music off whenever I'm recording gameplay. I actually usually use Shadow Play because it's super good. It's like I'm using Shadow Play right now as well. It's really, really effective. Um, and if, essentially, what I what I do is I turn off the in-game music because otherwise it would be a nightmare to record. I, I, sometimes I forget. So let's see if I did it this time. Yeah. So this whole section of gameplay, there's no music. And when I first started making recording gameplay, um. I didn't really do that, and what I'd end up doing is not using any game audio. And sometimes that's okay, and sometimes it stands out. I think I'm using game audio a lot more now as a, as a tool. So here, for instance, the, the Red Guard stuff. Stairs in the basement, and we would all package the game. Be cool, even if that was like, you know, maybe like 15 decibels lower, and you could just hear cling, 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 maybe. Um, I think I didn't use it because there was like some weird music happening on this footage. Um, this is footage I pulled from YouTube, so... Um, uh, we we credited the person we pulled it from. I you I literally could not get a playable version of Red Guard. It's impossible to find. Um, but this sort of stuff uh, it means that you can add that bit of flavor. So if you didn't have this, like let's mute that for instance and see how it sounds. Work back then. But I think the technology it was the first big open world. And then we'll go. Oh, and then you'll see one of my favorite things about this. But I think the technology it was the first big open world. The other thing is. Here's a little bit of insider. Todd slaps his wrist. Open world. Slaps his legs. Open that? world. Open world. That's not the sound of this goblin hitting the ground. Open world. But it makes it look like it is. Open world. So that was another kind of happy accident slash cover up um, for the doc because I couldn't get rid of it. Look at the audio. Look at the audio here. Open world. It's like literally when he's talking. So if I was to drop that. World. World. Just say open war. Open war. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. So, um, yeah, that was that was another kind of thing there. I guess just to... anyone can play. And then I light leaked out of this. I think. Oh, I didn't. I did. I did the odd. I did the transition. So anytime I'm transitioning into Elder Scrolls stuff, I'm using these analog transitions. And anytime I'm going into uh, Fallout stuff, sorry, if I'm using the Elder Scrolls stuff, then I'm using the light leaks. That's kind of and that happened from doing this trailer and learning that process, um, and kind of establishing that. And then I pulled that into whenever we had title transitions in the full docs i used those uh, sometimes i often just pull them right out of this timeline and put them in the other one so it's going to struggle a bit here to render this at full so let me drop it down to one quarter so this thing here this is just your the quality for your window if you don't have that much ram or you've got a lot of effects going on you can drop that down and it, it makes it easier to run in real time We had to create gun combat from the ground up. Something this company had it done since the Terminator game. So now we've had a minute of trailer. People are kind of up to speed a bit. They're like, now they're watching. And you can be a little bit more um, uh, busy in your editing, um, which I which I like doing. I like it's forcing people to sort of look a little bit. Or even like if they're not looking, just giving them the impression that there's so much information coming at them that there's like, oh my God, I'm being inundated with information. It's, I'm learning so much about this, um, which I quite like. Uh, so this, this section here, again, similar kind of thing. I'll actually drop it up again to the other one. It is the, the VHS, the Feller VHS thing with that little hollow matrix uh, effect on it, turning it green. Um, yeah, there's a bit of footage Jeremy shot with some really good color grading. Actually, I changed the color grading on this one fairly significantly because I wanted it to look greener. So the RGB curves that I used made stuff look way greener. And that was because I wanted all the Fallout stuff to look super green. So anything we shot in this external area, I did some dramatic, not dramatic, I did some f significant tweaking of the grade. Um, his brightness and contrast and luma curves and all that stuff was perfect. I just kind of tweaked the, the color variables to make it a little bit darker. And how you do that is just tinkering, just playing with it and seeing and getting used to it and all that sort of stuff. Um, same thing with the transitions here uh, and transitions here. And then the text uh, here, um, they've added in this new essential graphics panel, which this is the first time I'd ever used it. Um, it used to be you'd create text... Um, uh, uh, layers and you'd have them in your bins here and you'd, you'd make one and it would say fallout and then you drag it onto the thing the way they have it now is it works um 
like almost like a Photoshop layer where you just have text you just literally just move around it doesn't exist in the bin it just sits there um so these ones uh i used a fairly neutral font i think it's bibas perhaps bibas new oh it's big noodle titling okay so it's actually the same font that they use for overwatch which throws some people off especially because i used it oblique as well so when you side oblique it like that like it, oblique is kind of like an italicism but just not as dramatic um uh, it makes it look a little bit overwatchy, but uh, what was on this was a bunch of different stuff. So there's one as a color replace, because it was just... Uh, oh, I threw the color replace after the Hollow Matrix, didn't I? So if I re reverse those, it looks a bit weirder. Um, but there's a Hollow Matrix thing on it. First I turned it green, and then I put the Hollow Matrix effect on it and messed with it quite a bit to give it that sort of static-y... Like the lines, the like scan lines, and also the... Uh, there's a, so the background static is a separate layer. This thing is just, it's glowing and it's like, it's like pulsating and flickering. See it? And that's that effect that's going on there. Um, I, I do not know how to do that effect without doing the, uh, without doing it that way. This is weird. The hollow matrix on this one doesn't look very green. Weird. Um, and then on this one, I also have, see that layer around his head? It's sort of like a weird Vatsy thing. You can kind of see it there. If I delete here, da, 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 up above the vault boy's head. Um, again, it's just like a little visual flourish that builds around his head. I use it one more time. And then we're, after this, it's straight into Emil Pagliarello talking about... We uh, had to create... Fallout 3, so here's some B-roll of the old Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 in the manual and a Pip-Boy logo from Gun. the special edition of Fallout 4. We had to create gun back. From so the now it's like they were establishing it's Fallout 3. This is the exit of the vault of Fallout 3. So again, this was done in-game. I just used a controller. Controllers are really good for doing pan shots. You can't do it on a mouse and keyboard, but if you have a controller plugged in when you're playing these games, if they support them or you can mod them so they do. Um, I'm not sure if I modded three. It was one of the games I had to mod to make it work properly. I think it was Oblivion. Um, you can do slow pans. You just hold the analog stick and just let it move. And then also use uh, cheats like the like no clip cheat, for instance, or floating cheats and get rid of the menus. So you'll notice there's no menu on this gameplay. It's because I use the cheat like it's on the console you type in tm and it drops the menus out and it gives you like a cleaner version of it makes it look like it's smoother so if all our b-roll had menus on it you'd be like eh, but we pulled them out quite a lot this company had it done since the terminator game so you said terminator game terminator game comes up and then matt's but I talking i didn't want to tell him yeah i'm actually taking pictures of this so i can blow it up in a video game which is exactly what i was about to do next person we have a lot of takes of ron perlman giving us uh war never changes in many many ways next person we had skyrim working on xbox one like before we had fallout 4 like we yeah like it was like let's just put it on there and try it next person the first thing is for us is figure out where the hell is this game set like and it wasn't boston originally so that whole thing is about Fallout, and it's just the same part as the the one I demonstrated with the Elder Scrolls, where we're just going, we're overlaying footage, and, and people know some of these people now, so I don't need to, generally I don't like not showing people, because here's my like video layer, then it's an adjustment layer for the, the color grade, and then there's the B-roll, so if I drop the B-roll, you can just see they're all talking. Um, but I don't... At this stage, you knew some of the, you knew some of these voices. You didn't need. I needed to establish um, the the um, uh, audio director here. Matt, we already knew. Emil's here for the first time, maybe. I don't know. Um, so it's uh, again, it's that same thing. It's that same discipline of like showing people, but we're, but we're cranking it up. We're getting a little bit faster here. We're being a little bit more dangerous and daring with our editing because like people are now they're engaged and they're watching and they're they're here. But I so. didn't want to tell them. Yeah, I'm actually taking pictures of this so I can blow it up. And again, you're, you, now you're getting to, now you know most of the tricks I'm using here, right? We're using these uh, transitions in between so these. So I can blow it up in a video game. Nice little cut between the two those. He's actually referring to the Capitol building he's blowing up, but like nobody knows because it's the trailer. So I'll just, whatever. I think this shot of the Washington Monument I had was probably better. So pictures of this so I can blow it up. And I'll stick the trailer in. That's another thing people already know. Up in a video game. Also by this stage, I don't think I'd actually record an B roll for Fallout 3. So. Game, which is exactly what I was about to do. We have a lot of takes of Ron Perlman giving Again, and you're doing a lot of like shaving off people going um and ah. So let's see what it was actually being said. A lot here. of takes of Ron Perlman giving. All right, so there's like a gap there. So what I'm using is the B-roll as a shield. So I can make the cut here. I get rid of all that empty space. About to do. We have a lot. And also there's another thing that's happening here that I, I do quite a lot now, which is I overlap the audio of one with the other. So this is the audio from this. This is the audio from this. So once we get to here, we're done with Matt's audio. We have a lot. See that? And that little bit of a section. We have a lot. A little bit of a lead in. 
Let's see it the other way. Exactly what I was about to do. We have a lot of takes to do. We have a lot of takes. It's only like a little, I use it more dramatically later, but, or in, in other parts of the edit, but that's another trick you can do that sort of like leads people into the next section. It's, it's essentially another transition. It's just not like fading to black or dissolving or transitioning from one into the other, cross dissolving or making a VHS thing pop up. Um, but it is another transition technique. It's just over or under cutting on the previous one. Um, there's probably terms for this shit. I didn't go to film school, so I don't know. Um, but it's just, it's another way of like, you can do it the other way too if you want. You can, you can have it so that, you know. To do. We have a lot. Doesn't really work. To do. We have a So well there. You can do it sometimes, especially, I find it especially useful when people have, like, if he said something immediately there that I wanted to cut out, I could use that transition to ease that. Because otherwise you'd be like, and this is what I thought. And then, and this is what I thought. And then, and it would cut it. But if it go, and this is what I thought. And if before his mouth starts moving, you have the overlap on the other one. Then you can, instead of it being a dramatic cut that pulls it out, you can sort of soften it a bit. We have a lot of takes of Ron Perlman giving us uh, War Never Changes in many, many ways. We had Skyrim working on Xbox One, like before we had Fallout 4. Like we, yeah, like it was like, let's just put More it on there and try it. The first thing is for us is figure out where the hell is this game set? Like, and it wasn't Boston originally. And then here we have a light leak and a analog transition. Both are happening. That transition's over into the leak. You see the leak up here? It's like red. It just bursts, you know, fluctuating all over the screen there up here. Blah, 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 blah. So it's both happening. An epic quest. Again, this is a Skyrim map, but it's it's one that's like in development that's got lines written on it and shit. So it's like gives you that behind the scenes feeling. Again, and we're back into Elder Scrolls, kind of like we've talked about the Elder Scrolls stuff. We've talked about the Fallout stuff. And this is the third thing, which is I want to tell you we're going to talk about this other game. So it's an epic quest. Let's play it out, actually. This was a bit challenging because I kind of only needed just three beats. I needed an epic quest, up, probably up to about here, and then da -da, and da da da. An epic quest is longer than the other ones. The other reason I left the long on the first one is because I needed this one to be the like that. And also, this is quite a lot of furious editing. So if you're going to do something furious like that, it's really good to like calm down. So what you'll see is a lot of what um, whenever you watch any of the videos that we've done on. Um, uh, uh, oh, we're missing a bit of missing a clip here for some reason. I have to look into that. Um, whenever we're looking into, uh, whenever we're doing an intro, the intros are quite like like the Doom intro was like really really heavy, and then it ends on like a shot of the Ed building and just sits there for like three seconds. So that's kind of another thing. We just like let it let it do its thing, and then this is quite a bit of a furious section. So we're gonna calm it down. Where the hell is this game set? Like, and it wasn't Boston originally. Right. And again, I'm using the forms here on this first section and then the forms here again on, on this one. I think I might have edit changed where they were. No, it's about the same. And then on this one, I'm using this transition, which is just fucking crazy. Like it's from a spectrum. No, it's actually a, it's from a, a DOS uh, screen. It's just freaking out of it. And so I've got that going on in the background there with like a, like a screen. And then again, I'm using the forms here. I'm using uh, these like little line things, the forms between those. And then on this, I'm using this crazy like DOS like, look at it, Crash Dave's BD Snake. It's, I don't know, some C drive nonsense. And it's like corrupting and stuff. And I'm just using that here, but with a bit of a, I think it's only 20% opaque. So, uh, and again, it's like, you're hoping they can read that fast, right? And it's that big, like, here we go. We're building, we're building, we're building, we're building, we're building, we're building. Uh, black, don't be afraid of black. And then bring it back up again. Just let it sit there. If you drop to black, dipping to black is, is one of the most like powerful things you can do. Crashing to black is even better. And then we're back in. And this is like super fast editing at this stage. We're like, okay, you can see in the first section, we're got nice and slow, taking our time. This section, we're like, all right, we're getting a bit of pace. This section is when the wagon comes off the, off the wheels. Uh, the wheels come off the wagon while they're out there. And we're using the same tricks as before. Light leaks, um, 
uh, good color grading on the stuff. Um, we're using the bug and the text is just sitting there and a lot of B-roll. This is just like, this is all the stuff you're going to see throughout the project. Um, I don't know why this menu here isn't here. It's it's essentially what that is, is this menu, um, which is a, it's, a, it's an effect, it's a plugin. Actually, I'll, there's a bit of, there's a version of it later on. Uh, it's a plugin um, or an effect that I, again, bought off some guy in like the Czech Republic for like 20 quid and it was an After Effects um, slide for Fallout and what I did was I replaced the sounds with the actual sounds of the recorded slide thing that happens in the menu for Fallout 3 um, and I used that in the Fallout 76 doc as like these are the different monsters and um, in an After Effects file I basically just replaced the default pictures they had with pictures of the monsters and did that and what, what I had on the final version is obviously not this like media offline um, I don't know why it's I tried to reconnect it and it was freaking out I think it's because it's a Navy I file um, so whatever um, but it was just it was just one of those pictures the text wasn't ideal I think Documentary history, but it kind of worked. I uh, played around with that for a while, but uh, this is what this section kind of looks like. It's just like it's it's all the tricks, but just faster and going with the music. So here it is. Especially the boom boom is my favorite part. Just that little doo doo, like it's it's such an interesting two shots to play with. And again, it establishes we're at DC. It's like another flavor. So basically, all the different types of flavors of stuff we shot, I'm trying to get in. A little bit of movement on that text as well. See that? A little bit of movement. It's, it's going backwards for it's just to give it a bit of something. Sometimes you have st st static text, even if it's just like moving a little bit, it gives it a little bit more something. I don't know what. So again, this would look better if I put it on full, but this thing's crashing all the time, so I don't want to. Um, so basically, you can see the camber we're doing. It's like, duh, duh, hold, duh, duh, hold. And then on the last one, we're just like, no, we're still going. So it's like, it's increasing in speed even that little bit. Holding on this one. And basically what I'm trying to do is figuring out a way of how to in two sentences do I best tell them what this is. And what I went for was an exclusive behind the scenes dive, which I thought was you could digest in one go and put in your brain, into the design of Fallout 76. Really what I want anyone to know about this is that we're working on Fallout 76, which is why the text is a different color and it's spasming. Because it's like, that's what we're talking about. Uh, these are the shots, great shots that um, Esteban took. Um, and again, I have this. So that's what that shot usually looked like. And what I've done is basically put that menu over that. And I think I screened it at like maybe, yeah, 40%. Something else going on. I probably would have slowed it down maybe if I could do it again. You can see those are real light leaks. See those ones? Those are real light leaks over, over Jeremy's and the light. I'm not quite sure this looks great, but it's effective enough. So it's basically like, we are behind the scenes. We just said behind the scenes. You're behind the scenes. Hell yeah, we're behind the scenes. Look at all this behind the scenes footage we have. Behind the scenes. Well, okay, that's, you're invited as, that was from the Fallout 76 trailers. We're like, you're invited. That's super behind the scenes looking. That's a fucking canteen. That's real behind the scenes. And it says, into design of Fallout 76. And then I had to get clearance for one thing we could show from the B-roll before the game came out. And it's this shot. And because they wanted to show nothing about the outside of the world. They did not want to show West Virginia. They did not want to show anything about the type of game it was. All the off-screen we had was like crazy. So I sent them four or five pictures. And I was like, here are the pictures that I think would work that we could put in the trailer. Because the only thing, we don't give them sign off on anything. 
But like, if they're announcing a fucking game, then I don't want to spoil it in the teaser for our doc because that would be a nightmare. So uh, the one they went for was this, and Reddit poured over this image because it's the it was used for the trailer, the teaser trailer that they put out before uh, at the Microsoft conference where they're walking over the power armor. That's what this whole animation thing is. We were just watching him produce it, and it's the. It's the power armor from Vault 101, I think, and it has all this text people poured into and found. So we knew they were going to do that, so we, I checked this image a lot and made sure that it wasn't too crazy, and then that was the one shot we used. Because up until now, we've basically not used, like, gameplay gameplay from these games. So the last thing I want you to feel like is, like, nostalgia for all those games. So we're going to go for, like, a weird Daggerfall thing. I love this game of the year thing because Cliffy B is presenting it to them. Um, Daggerfall, and then definitely the start of Morrowind because we haven't shown any Morrowind yet, and that's going to pull on heartstrings. Then Megaton and Fallout 3, practically everyone. If there's one other thing people know about Fallout 3 except for the first vault that they've all done, it's Megaton. And then this I like because the shotgun blast goes with the animation, goes with the music. And then we're soft again. We're back to the start. So we're cr there's an arc. Even the trailer has an arc. So we're back to the lobby. You know the lobby. The lobby is where you had all those little fond memories of being introduced to the trailer. And we're gonna try and pull on that heart string with the with the with the guitar with the violin strings again. So the first time we showed was the um, was uh, Mr. Handy. But I felt like the one icon we had in this whole place was was our was our Brotherhood of Steel armor here, so that's why it ends that. And again, it's using the black, letting like letting the empty space happen, so that if you can dip to black, then when images come back up, those images feel more vibrant. They feel bigger than if you just had images all the time. Remind people that there could be nothing there. So that whole thing is supposed to be a little bit, to get you a little bit emotional about it and like an anticipating and feel it. Because the music's so powerful. I mean, music's doing 90% of the work here, right? So you're just trying, trying not to get in the way of the music, essentially, at this stage. Um, this shot, I think I punched in on. Did I? I did. So this is the original shot. But it doesn't have the same feeling. kind of just looks like an alternative shot which it is is, Jer is Jeremy getting coverage Jeremy's just like filming filming as much b-roll as he can because he doesn't know what I'm going to use it for or how much I'll need so he gets as much as he can so that's just it just looks like a coverage shot but if we dive in we really like people's close-ups of people's faces is basically the most powerful thing you can do in cinema so and it works with this sort of stuff too. It works if you're familiar with that image of that Brotherhood of Steel, the reveal of Fallout 3. Um, if you just sit in a little bit, it just gives that a little bit more of an emotional point, bit, like punch. It's all, it's in focus. You just can't see because I'm not because this thing keeps fucking crashing. So I'm doing it there. And then the last thing I want people to know: the last thing you can't tell everything in a trailer. You can you can. You can. I have three questions, like I said, I wanted to answer or let people know. We're talking about Elder Scrolls. We're talking about old Fallout games. We're also going to talk about Fallout 76. But there is this, what's it called? A call to action, I guess. At the end of anything you do or any article you write, you want to send people in a direction. It's not just enough to have their captive presence there for that moment. If you, you Once you have their captive audience, you can recommend them something. And if you're writing an article, then recommend another article you wrote. And if you're playing a music song, or you play one of your favorite pop songs, then play a song that they've not heard of, or maybe play a different song. Like, you, you, people, audience members like to be told what next. They want something more from you. That's why we binge watch Netflix things. So, you have this opportunity, a call to action, that effectively any sort of most media, especially web media you make. And what I want people to do at the end of this video is subscribe and know what the hell is coming and when. Or one or the other. That's basically it. And if I can make them a patron, even better. But really what I want them to know is these are when the docs coming out. And then if you want a call to action like the then subscribe and, and give us some money, basically, right? So we can keep doing this shit. So 
I could have done two things here. I could have been like the first one comes up Tuesday. The second one comes up uh, t Tuesday, June 12th. Like it could have been in sequence, right? Bethesda Game Studios, June 5th, Fallout 76, blah, 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 blah. But I knew I had limited time because again, I'm the master to the music here. Um, so, or I'm, it's ma the music is the master of me in this situation. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm leaving it all up. And also they are complementary pieces. They are two sides of the same coin. One is looking backwards, one is looking forwards. So it makes sense to have them together. So that's why I have this uh, thing with a little bit of a dividing line in the middle. I think the graphic, I think that's just like a piece of text graphic I've used or something. This graphic in the middle, it's just a white bar. Is that what it is? I don't even know where the white bar is coming from. Oh, this guy. Oh, it's part of the text. That's funny. So it's literally like just a white bar that I stuck in on that text layer. Um, then I've got a light leak going on here, which you can see has been cropped to only be in the top section. So if I do that, it'll come down. And then I have a VHS layer here, which again is only been showing on the bottom layer. So it's just a simple crop I've used here to shave off the bottom half of it, essentially. Um, pretty easy. So that's what that is. There's two documentaries coming. Hope you like them. And... That's it. And there's something elegant. I always, I love the logo and I love our very elegant, short, we are crowdfunded video game documentaries. Each of those as an individual word is a statement for what we do. I think it basically covers 99% of what we do. We're crowdfunded. It's critically important to what we, to our image and what we're doing and the why we're doing it and the projects we take on. We only talk about video games and we only make documentaries. <laughs> so... I make sure to put that on everything, especially when it's a trailer, because people don't necessarily know who we are or what we do. So that's why it starts with it. That's why it ends with it. And then you'll see that there's like a form to the rest of it, right? Like we open in the lobby, we close in the lobby. In the middle we have fast paced, slower paced, fast, faster paced, fast roller coaster pace. And then the end, like I said, once you've once you've put them through that. Slow it down a little bit. Just a little bit. And then slow it down a lot here. And stay there. And then like a snail. Nothing happens. Room to breathe. Captive audience looking at the logo. And hey, call to action. Support our work if you want. Stick it on the end. We do not put Patreon calls to action or subscriber things anywhere near the rest of the stuff. I'm sure we'd get more people if we did. But the idea is that it is secondary. What's most important is the stuff we're making. By the way, if you're still watching by the end of this trailer... And then keep it up there for a little bit, and then we're out. We're done. And then on the YouTube version of this, it'll come up. Subscribe, and here's another video you can watch, and yada yada yada. Put those end screen annotations in. And that's 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 the trailer. Music fades out on its own. I don't think I I think I was gonna drop it down here, but it ended up not doing so because it fades out on its own. And then once I get to here, it stops. That's where the video ends. You can re render it. And that's, that's essentially it. That's the sort of anatomy of that trailer. Um, uh, if you have any questions of stuff that I breezed over or things that I wasn't thinking about at all, uh, please put them in the comments on the Patreon page. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it was uh, uh, instructive. Uh, this computer crashed four times doing this because I'm recording audio, webcam, and my screen. So hopefully it all works when I uh, when I export it. Um, but that's been the anatomy of a, of a, a no-clip trailer, I guess. Thank you so much for supporting our work. Um, this series is, is another bonus we're doing because of all the uh, wonderful support we've had um, over the past couple of years. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If, uh, if you have any suggestions for stuff you'd like for us to cover in the future, let us know. But we've also got a bunch of more ideas and we'll be uh, spitting these out a lot over the next uh, six months uh, throughout the rest of 2018. Uh, thanks so much. Have any questions? Put them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, sit back and watch the trailer maybe on YouTube now and you can see it all, where it all uh, came from and how it all came together.
We had to create gun combat from the ground up, something this company had it done since the Terminator game. But I didn't want to tell him, yeah, I'm actually taking pictures of this so I can blow it up in a video game, which is exactly what I was about to do. We have a lot of takes of Ron Perlman giving us uh, War Never Changes in many, many ways. We had Skyrim working on Xbox One, like before we had Fallout 4. Like we, yeah, like it was like, let's just put it on there and try it.